What is up adventure goers, in today's video I'm going to show you how much things have changed at Lake Mead due to all the recent rainfall, and I'm going to show you some of my new findings. Be sure to like the video and watch until the very end, otherwise I'll develop a drinking problem. Take a look at this. Did we just find a bone? Well, spank my ass and call me Harold. Take a look at that. If you guys recall to one of my most recent videos where I came out here, I was actually able to stand right next to it and put my hand on it. And this video that you're seeing right here where the water is right up to the edge of the boat, that's actually where the water level was when I first came out here, I want to say the first week of July. Here's a photo of the Higgins boat I first took on my trip out here on July 6th. Here's another photo I took of it on July 28th. And of course, here's where it sits today. It's crazy how much the water levels can fluctuate within only a couple months. It's crazy to see how much a lake can drop in just weeks, but it's even crazier to see how much it can fill up with the right amount of rain. But that's it for the Higgins boat right there. Let's actually turn the camera this way. We're gonna go back over there and see if we can find that other cabin boat and then just kind of walk around out in that area and see what we can find because i haven't gone too far out there so let's go well look what we found here is that a raiders hat las vegas raiders snapback that actually doesn't look like it's in too bad a condition either i might actually keep that i don't know i mean yeah it's not looking too good at face value here but i mean you know some soap some water i think i might actually hold on to that Let's just go ahead and pocket that. <laughs> Whoa, look at this. <laughs> Can anybody tell me what kind of booze that was? I have never seen a bottle like that ever. This kind of looks like something from back in like the late 18, early 1900s. Some moonshine. Although I don't think it was moonshine. If you guys have any idea of what kind of liquor this was, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Ah, look what we got here. We got some cinder blocks with some string around them. You tie that to the bottom of the victim's feet so that way they don't rise to the surface. Not that I've done that. I'm just saying that's typically what you see in horror movies. Well, here we have the old cuddy cabin boat, folks. I'll put up a before and after photo. I spent like weeks on the internet trying to find what this one would have looked like before it ended up here the way it did. So the closest one I could find looks like this. And of course, this is the one that we have right here. Maybe not exactly the same thing, but pretty close. Is that an old briefcase or some sort? Looks like we got a battery over here. It almost kind of looks like it'd be an ammo box because typically on batteries you have like the little, I don't know what you call them, like inserts right here where you put the battery cables. So that's probably an ammo box. I'll have to ask my friend Alex that I used to work with because he would definitely know yeah, we got some latches right here. I'll have to pin that one in the comments section down below. But I did not see this the last time I was out here. We'll just let it sit right there. Looks like we got a couple fishing rods right here. Wow. Let's go catch some trout. Looks like we got a engine cover here. Let's see if I can pull this in, get some in for me. Okay, that is freaking heavy. Urgh. Whew. Mercury Nitro Series. Well, that begs the question, if the cover is here, where's the rest of it at? Maybe we'll just have to keep on walking to find out. So there's one thing I've noticed about Lake Mead, other than the water line up there. Uh, the trash is really a timeline indicator, other than indicating careless ass people that don't care about the environment. Uh, this is a hams right here, and that's the old school can look that they had back in the days. I don't know which generation this is from. So the one thing I've noticed down here is where you find like the old school Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and ham. But who knows, right now we could be standing in like, I don't know, the 70s. And then of course, the further you go up there where the water line is, that's where you find your most recent, you know, Bud Light, Corona, Coors, etc., etc. So trash is a little bit of a timeline indicator. Oh my God, you guys are not gonna believe what I just found. So I happened to look up here and I saw something that looked white and kind of out of shape, kind of like my girlfriend. And I happened to notice that it was a jet ski. And then I looked over here and we found another jet ski. We're gonna go check these out here and see if we can't get some sort of information off of them or get a little bit of a timeline from when these jet skis would have been around. Take a look at that. I have no idea what era this is from, but like I said, going by the trash timeline, this could very well be from the 70s. Oil, gas, temperature. This is actually pretty cool. 
I've been out to Lake Mead tons of times, but I never ever spotted these. Well, mainly because I never came out this far before. That is so cool. If you guys have any information on this jet ski or can kind of point me in the direction of maybe when this was manufactured, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. It would greatly be appreciated. Now, let's point the camera this way. Let's go check out that one. This one is just like ingrained into this bank here ever so perfectly. Let's take a look at the engine works here. Let's see, you got a doohickey there, a thingamabobber there that goes into the what's-a-majig. And that's pretty much how a jet ski works. This is so cool. If I had to guess, alcohol related, that one down there was alcohol related. Or maybe they were being chased by outlaws and they jumped off their jet skis, let them slam into the bank over here, and then made it away. Who knows? I can't seem to find any sort of decals or lettering or words on this thing here other than the warning signs that tell you not to be a dumbass. But like I said, if you guys have any idea what make or model or when this was manufactured, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. Ooh, that is old school. Look at that seven up can. So the jet skis are up there and I happened to glance down in this direction and I found the seats to one of those jet skis. I also found a fishing pole, but it looks like it's of no use anymore. But yeah, I found one of the seats here. It looks like there's like a floaty of some sort, like a small buoy. Please don't let there be rattlesnakes underneath this thing. Cool. Wow. Interesting. That is extremely hot too. Ow. I thought I'd take a look in the water to see if I could see anything else lurking just beneath the surface, but I don't think there is anything. A couple small little fish here and there. That's crazy too, because you can see the rocks right here, and it looks like there's like a giant drop off right there. I'm really gonna have to come back here with my GoPro, my snorkel, and my flippers. I used to do a lot of snorkeling back in Minnesota, bring my kayak and whatnot, but can't go snorkeling by yourself because you don't want to die. I don't want people finding my body. Like, <laughs> why would I want anyone finding my body? I mean, the moral of the story is just don't die, but uh, yeah, you get it. Take a look at this. Did we just find a bone? Look at that. I'm no anthropologist, but that kind of looks like a bone. I thought it was a rock at first, but then as I got closer. Looks like it could be a bone of some sort. I'm not saying it's a human bone. Could be a coyote bone. Could be a freaking shark bone for all we know. But that definitely looks like a bone. I thought it was a rock, but then as I got closer and looked at the shape, and look at that, yeah. That looks like a bone. We're back at the famous speedboat location at Government Wash at Lake Mead. We haven't been to Las Vegas in about a couple weeks and they've been getting pounded with rain as of recently. So I figured I'd come back and take a look at where the water levels are and see how much things have changed. As you can see here, <laughs> we kind of got like the little Amazon rainforest going on right here. Well, not quite. But the first time I came out here, if you look at some of my uh, first videos that started documenting the water levels, you'll know that when I first came out here, there was just a little bit of grass out here and you could see all the cracks in the ground but now all you can see is grass this is quite astonishing and we'll go over there in a second but if you look at that island the last time we were out here there was no water right there you could almost walk out to the island itself that's assuming you don't get stuck in the mud but we're gonna walk around here a little bit and take a look at things it's crazy to think that just months ago back in May this was all surrounded by water everything that you see here that's green was all water fast forward about three months to August 18th and now it's all surrounded by green plant life and this is only going to grow taller and taller too I mean some of the waters even filled back in due to all the rain that we've got so we'll have to come out here in the next few weeks and just see how things transition. This area kind of reminds me of my old neighbor's house back in Minnesota. He was a meth head and he never cut his grass. So every summer it grew to like three to four feet tall. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Is it a good idea to be walking through this tall grass out in the middle of the desert? A desert where there's rattlesnakes and scorpions? Well, it's probably not a good idea. But then again, I once shared a beer with a homeless person on Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas. Whoa, shoot. And I survived that, so I'm not too worried about anything else. And here's ye old famous speedboat. Not much has changed. Part of me really wants to try to climb up there and see if there's anything in there. 
but that is an accident waiting to happen. And my luck is in short supply these days. Here's a video of what the area looked like on July 28th. And here's what it looks like as of August 19th. As you can see, Lake Mead has seen a pretty significant increase in water as of the past couple weeks, which is great, but this doesn't solve the drought problem. Water cuts from the Colorado River are still being implemented. Unfortunately, it's going to take a lot more than just one monsoon season to replenish Lake Mead. But as my gambling addicted landlord always says, something is better than nothing. All right, everybody. So now we are out at the famous Overton Arm, further up Lake Mead. And the reason why we're here is, on one of my most recent videos, you guys were kind of expressing interest in the B-29 uh, bomber plane. Well, I kind of mentioned it too. And supposedly that area back there is where it crashed back in 1948. I couldn't find any exact coordinates or anything like that that kind of pinpointed the spot, but they said it crashed at the Overton Arm, which is back in that area right there. But I don't imagine the park would actually, you know, leak the coordinates because it's an area that they're trying to protect and preserve for future generations to come. But anyway, that crashed back in 1948 and it wasn't discovered up until 2002. And according to dive the b29.com, apparently it sits below the surface at about 115 feet. Now, depending on when that was typed up, it could have changed, obviously because, you know, the declining water levels out here in drought and shit like that. <laughs> I imagine it's probably not at 115 feet anymore, but who knows? But yeah, that's kind of the area of where it happened. I would love to go out there and dive and check it out, but I really don't foresee that happening. But I figured I would at least come out here and kind of show you guys the area of where the plane actually crashed, just to kind of give you a feel for things out here. So the story goes like this. The B-29 was out in the Lake Mead area conducting some scientific research when the pilot unfortunately misjudged the elevation. They ended up going down and when the plane initially hit Lake Mead, they bounced off of the surface and the plane was thrown about a quarter of a mile before submerging into the lake. All five crew members survived with mostly minor injuries. The B-29 has been sitting at the bottom of Lake Mead ever since. And hey, if you guys want to binge more of my Lake Mead content, be sure to click the playlist that you see right here and continue the fun. We'll see you guys next week.